Hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about two four bay natties from QNAT with a huge difference. With a release window of five years between them, it does seem that even though one of these natties is crazy old by modern NAS uh, standards, it does still seem to be popular. And even though the newest generation has arrived, a number of you are still wondering which one holds up the best and which one deserves their data. So, do you guys remember 2015? It feels like an exceptionally long time ago. It was pre-COVID, pre-Trump, pre-Brexit. And I know I probably lost a lot of you just with that sentence. But for those of you that stuck around, thanks for staying. But still, nevertheless, five years is an exceptionally long time. And in technology, it's epic. So much can change. And what we consider to be the standard or what is considered to be the most acceptable norms in technology, five years down the line, are considered base caveman terms. When the 451 arrived on the scene, it was considered the more budget Intel powered solution. The 451 series, which since has had three or four different revisions over the last five years in different versions, came from this when this device was their latest release. The 451 Plus back in 2015 was the one that really changed things up a bit. It arrived with a remote control. It was a quad-core Intel-based CPU. It factored in dual LAN technology. It had 1080p transcoding, and it was exceptionally affordable. Now, the device arrives at the moment at around 450 quid, including tax. But if you shop around, you might get it for close to 400 nicker, depending on where you shop. And it's still popular. It's still, you know, remarkably popular when you shop around. There's lots of websites that still stock it. QNAP still say that they do sell a lot of units of this rather affordable solution. And for an Intel-based NAS that goes up to 8 gig once you upgrade it, it still packs a bit of a punch. It still runs all the latest applications. It can run virtual machines, Flex Media Server, and more. Well, and now, over here, we've got the newest generation 4 bay. This is the TS453D. Now, the TS453D or the 53D as we're going to call it for the rest of the video, is the newest gen and arrives at around 570 to 580 quid. So a huge disparity there of around 120 to 130 quid. But over five years, that's not actually that much. And for 120 pounds for two devices that aren't even in the same product family, 53 and 51 series, this has a whole host of hardware that this, some of which could only ever dream of. Some of the hardware featured in the 53D hadn't even been invented by the time this was released. Now, of course, with the benefit of hindsight, of course this device is better, it's newer, it's had more work done, and the way NAS technology has moved forward over these years has largely been the reason it is so much better, but it is so much more than that, because 120 to 130 quid, five years down the line, is kind of indicative of two things. This device, the 53D, the CPU, the memory, the network ports, the PCIe upgradability, and the way and efficiency that it runs QNAP's QTS platform is still significantly better, as you would expect from the way things have moved over time. But the 451 Plus is still a good NAS and still available. I don't think it will still be available by the end of 2020, but a number of you are seeing great deals on this device. So let's talk about what they've got in common. Stuff that, you know, regardless of which one you buy, you're going to get. You're going to get a NAS that runs QTS remarkably well. You're going to get a NAS that's got that multi-tiered backup strategy and hybrid backup sync 3, video station, music station, photo station, the AI-powered QMaggie application, all of which run on both of these devices very well. They both have multi-user environments. They both got HDMI out. So there's that parallel HD station or hybrid desk station that allows you to access your device via the network, the internet, and over HDMI, all simultaneously with multiple apps and users at any given time. They both arrive with support of iTunes, DLNA Media Server, MB, Twonky, Plex Media Server, I think I already mentioned that, Virtualization, QVR Pro, Surveillance Station, all of the applications, and the desktop and mobile clients too, for Mac, PC, iOS, Android, they both arrive with great support. Indeed, the 451 Plus, I believe, even arrives with a remote control. So. The, these devices do provide a great amount of support, and if you do see the 451 at a cheap price, even lower than that, which I've stated on the screen, you may be looking at a hell of a bargain. But now let's talk about the differences. Let's talk, ultimately, about what you lose out on if you buy this. Because this device is better than this device in practically every way, and by the ways that it's not better are so small, there is to make no difference whatsoever. So. 
The 453D is a three-year warranty device with the 451 Plus arriving with a two-year warranty. So you get one extra year warranty with the D. On top of that, the CPUs, although both Intel and architecture and both quad-core, have a huge amount of difference between them. The uh, 451 Plus uses the J1900 CPU, ranks about 1,000 or so on CPU benchmark, and it arrives with a quad-core 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.4. Now, that CPU supports DDR3 memory, and it arrives with 2 gig, which can be upgraded to 8 gig. So, very similar architecture as what we see now from modern devices all the way back in 2015. The D, on the other hand, arrives with that quad-core J4125, rated over 3000 on CPU benchmark, and with a greater graphics processor, 4K and 1080p transcoding, as opposed to just 1080p, and support of UHD Graphics 600 means that this device is going to handle graphical files better. On top of that, it also arrives with support of DDR4 memory. Two, uh, it arrives with 4 gig by default, which can be upgraded to 8 gig. Faster, more efficient memory overall. So, ultimately, internally, you just get more with the D. You know, AES uh, NI encryption, graphical handling capabilities, a better floating point. And thanks to that increased embedded graphics, it means it's going to run things like QBR Pro and Virtualization Station and Linux Station that much better. Not just Container Station, but main OS handling applications just way, way better. Now, they're both 4-based. They both support SATA drives, and they both support the latest 16TB Seagate Ironwolf drives, as well as Ironwolf SSDs. You can use all the media inside both of them as an equal level footing of SATA 6 gigabits per second support. The um, chassis are very different indeed, unsurprisingly, given the age difference, but they're both plastic in design, and both have got their own plastic trays as well. If we look at the rear of the devices, we can take a good look at the main differences between these two in terms of ports and connections, because that is one major area of difference between these two devices. If we have a look, we can see that although they look remarkably similar, we can see that the... 451 Plus has got slightly less in the ports department. If we bring it back down to the table, we can take a look at just how those ports and connections kind of space out between them. Because they're both two port NASes in terms of network connectivity, but this device utilizes one GBE, which can be link aggregated with both of them to get two GBE. So that's 100 megabytes per second that you can ramp up with a supported switch or router that supports lag up to 200 megabytes per second. The D arrives with support of 2.5 GBE ports. So each port can give you up to 250 megabytes per second based on the right media and a supported switch and uh, the right RAID. But you can link aggregate those to give you up to 5 GBE or 500 megabytes per second. Now, USB ports are kind of you know negotiable between the two of them, given that this five-year-old NAS has got two USB 3 and two USB 2, and this device has two USB 3 and three USB 2. And I think anyone that watches this channel a lot will know my feelings on USB 2. I don't know why it's still around, and the very fact that it's been around five years on for me is absolutely annoying. Don't get me wrong, you can use it in UPSs and printers and keyboards and mice and stuff that don't need USB 3. But given this age of USB 3 expansions and USB 3 to 5 GBE adapters, I do think USB 2 should have been dropped by now. But not debating the USB ports too much here. We can look at the HDMI ports. Both of them support 1080p at 60 frames per second. But because this one is HDMI 2.0 and this is HDMI 1.4b, it means that this, if it does play 4K files, because that CPU will have to work quite hard, it can only do them at 30 frames per second, whereas the 53D can knock 4K out at 60 frames per second, which for local multimedia enjoyment is definitely something to write home about. Now, that HDMI output, you've got your dedicated app for that, but they do run the same applications overall. But the last big difference between these devices is the fact that the D has that PCI upgrade slot. That means you can add internal SSD bays, M2 or NVMe, that can be used for raw storage or caching to vastly improve internal operation speeds, or you can utilize it for 10 GBE or 5 GBE or 2.5 GBE ports to add even more network connections to this and improve your external speeds, or QM2 upgrade card series to have both improved internal and improved external via those QM2 
combo cards that you can install inside this. Now that combined with those network ports, the improved HDMI, the better CPU, and the extra year of warranty, that is where the difference lies between these two devices. So now you have to ask yourself a main question. You have to wonder, how much money have you got? And if you are buying this, are you buying it knowing you're never going to use the upgrade? You're never going to use 4K HDMI and you're never going to use 2.5 GBE. Because the difference of 120, 130 quid, it's not actually much once you break it down into the years. And that extra year's warranty on its own is probably worth about 20, 30 quid at the best of times. And although you can upgrade the warranty on these manually if you choose, better to upgrade from two to five years, I'm oh, sorry, three to five years than two to five. It's just going to cost a lot more. So when choosing between these, just know that the 451 Plus is a NAS that arrives with a lower glass ceiling. It's old and it still does really, really well. I've got to say, I mean, it is showing its age a little bit, but the fact still remains, if we get that closer to camera, if we take a good close look at this device, put that there, and I'm not wrecking the joint, that between these two NASes, we can see two solutions that are very much products of their age. They even, even the design of both of these devices is different enough for us to know which one's the older and which one's the newer. And I hope today's video has helped you choose between these two NASs. I can't tell you which one is better for you because I don't know your data setup. I can only tell you that this device here is the one that is going to last less time in terms of overall operational output and how well it worked for you. I'd love to know how many people watching this still own the 451 Plus and it still works up to this very day. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you guys cho chose if you were picking between these two devices. This is still a great NAS and it still brings a lot to the table. It's just showing its age just a little bit. Visit the links in the description to both span.com and NAS Compares to learn more and click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more. I will see you next time.